Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. In a horror story, the victim keeps asking why, but there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest, and it's what we'll remember in the end. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. The year was 2010. University was steadily becoming a distant memory, and working full-time was my new reality. I had patiently waited for Alan Wake to release. A game from Remedy, the creators of Max Payne. A horror game that wore its Stephen King influence on its sleeve, looked beautiful, and would finally scratch my survival horror itch. Things were finally looking up after Resident Evil 5 continued to take the franchise away from horror. Was this game going to be deep and uncomfortable like Silent Hill? I couldn't wait. So I popped this bad boy in my 360 and let the darkness take me. Until. About a week later, when Red Dead Redemption was released, and Alan Wake faded from my focus, and I didn't go back to it until now. It's 12 years later, and after seeing the remaster of Alan Wake was only £15 in my local game shop, I decided to pull the trigger and give it another go. And that turned out to be one of my better decisions. In this game, you play a thriller writer who is taking a holiday with his wife in the picturesque town of Bright Falls in order to de-stress and try and clear his writer's block. After a creepy encounter at the local diner, the couple head to their cabin on Diver's Isle. After a power outage, your wife is dragged into the lake by what you come to know as the Dark Presence. Oh no! You dive in after her, pass out, and wake up a week later in your crashed car. From here on, the game is all about getting your wife back, fighting the Dark Presence, and trying to understand how you wrote a manuscript, but you didn't remember doing it. The rest of this mystery, I feel that you should experience for yourself. It's really worth a go. Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. Gameplay is much what you would expect from a third person action game. Running, dodging, and shooting. The controls are not as fluid as you may be used to with modern games, but it won't get in the way of you enjoying the gameplay. For me, the most interesting aspect of combat was using the flashlight. In Alan Wake, you use the flashlight to burn the darkness away from people and objects possessed by the Dark Presence, leaving them vulnerable to regular gunfire. And although this combat system never really evolves past stronger weapons and harder encounters, it never really lost its charm in my eyes. Alan's arsenal expands from pistols, shotguns and hunting rifles to a heavy duty flashlight, flares and flashbangs. In certain areas, you get to use emergency lights and spotlights, and there's this one awesome bit on a farm, but I really don't want to spoil that because it is amazing. All in all, don't this worry. game has a great I'll story, inside, compelling, oh, interesting well, characters, sunny. and fun gameplay. Large portions of the game are creepy, dark and oppressive. And the story, in my eyes, is the star of the show. The game has some minor issues with frame rate and of course the problems with the controls. It's definitely a flawed gem, but a gem nonetheless. And I can confidently say I'm glad I went back to this one. So, here we are at the end of the video, and I honestly didn't think that I was going to give a score to this game, but I give it 4 out of 5 typewriters. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe. Any feedback is more than welcome. As long as it's constructive, I am quite happy to take it. Thank you.